Hey guys, what's up? Mrs. Phoenix, and this is another Skyrim video, this time showing you how to find a weapon called the Ebony Blade. Um, it's in Whiterun, and when you get into Whiterun, you head straight along this path up to the um, sort of tavern uh, called the Bannered Mare. And once you're heading here, you want to speak to the bar lady, the barmaid, whatever. Um, oh yeah, uh, you see in the top corner that said I was level 20. I have heard rumours that you have to be a certain level to unlock this. Um, so you want to speak to her, ask for if she's heard any rumours lately, and she will at some point tell you about the Jarl's children. Like I said, I don't know exactly when it happens or triggers it, but I've heard that you have to be at least level 20 to unlock it. Could be wrong, but... You know, um, I did actually try it at an earlier level and didn't get this quest. Um, when I tried it at level 20, it came up. So anyway, you when you speak to her, she tells you to go and see the Jarl and speak to him about his kids. So you want to head to the right, up these stairs, straight across here, past this massive tree, follow the stairs up the way, and you'll eventually come to the Jarl's keep called Dragon's Reach. Um, with the exception of the water here, I think this area looks quite a lot like Rohan from Lord of the Rings. Um, just my opinion, but, you know, um, and also, yeah, this quest, very quick, um, although there's a lot of talking in it, um, you can skip the talking, although I didn't, um, so this part I've actually sped up a little bit, because uh, I figured you guys probably don't want to listen to all the talking, um, if you do want to, you can, you can just list it, leave it, or if you want to skip it, obviously you can skip it, um, both on this video and in game, or you might miss something if you skip the video. Um, so anyway, you need to get into the keep, speak to the Jarl, um, he's usually found on his throne at the end there, but I happen to find him having some food, although his plate was empty, so he must have eaten all of his lunch like a good boy, uh, he probably had, like, beef and potatoes, maybe, maybe steak, in fact, he probably had steak, waffles, french fries, and of course, scotch, um, because that is the favourite meal of TV anchorman Ron Burgundy. So anyway, when you speak to the Jarl, he then tells you to go and speak to Nelkir, his son. Uh, sadistic little guy, this one. He basically just slags off his dad, although I suppose with good reason. Um, he finds out that he's got a different mum to his siblings. Wow, that's, that's pretty harsh. But yeah, he slags his dad off, even though his dad's no more than, what, three metres away from him. So that's quite funny. Um, so he will tell you about the Whispering Lady. Um, and she is a person who essentially gives you the Ebony Blade, or sorts you out of it. Um... The Ebony Blades, I'm not going to tell you guys that it's the best weapon ever, because I haven't even played Skyrim that much, I mean I've played it quite a bit, but I haven't even leveled up that much, so there might be better weapons in the later on in the game, but the Ebony Blade so far is probably the best weapon I've found yet. Um, it's an enchanted weapon and it has a never ending enchantment, so that is pretty funky. Um, so yeah, just here you speak to the Whispering Lady. This section goes on for a bit, and <clears throat> I don't think you can skip it either. If I remember rightly, I tried skipping this conversation one time, and it just would not skip. Um, so this is probably the most tedious part of this quest, and that is it. There's no combat, it's just a lot of running around, a lot of talking. But genuinely, it's like a five minute quest, so it's very quick, and this weapon is, is, is wicked. Um, before using this, I was using one-handed... A weapon, either dual wielding or one handed with a shield. Um, I was using like the Skyforge steel sword, which was pretty cool, um, and pairing that with oddly a scimitar, which despite being really cheap, it actually did quite a bit of damage. I was a bit surprised about that. Um, or I'd mix up with uh, a shield like a fine steel shield, I think I was using at the time. Um, since I found this sword, I've completely switched. I now only use two handed pretty much. I pretty much don't touch one handed or shields anymore because um, it's just it's silly. Um, my one handed I got up to like almost level 50 or in fact maybe more than level 50 um, my two handed was like level 20 I barely touched it but now uh, they're actually not close together now um, for the record the armour I'm wearing is a steel helmet of regeneration um, dwarven armour with no enchantment uh, dwarven gauntlets of archery uh, or dwarven braces of archery um, and the boots, if I remember rightly, are cuffed steel boots with a resist frost. Um, yeah, I think that's what I've got there. Um, so you have to head up, well, you don't have to head upstairs, you have to go and speak to the boy who turns out upstairs. You speak to him again, and he'll pretty much say, Ah, oh, you found the whispering door, lovely. <clears throat> you need to get in there, so you need to go and get a key. The only people with the key are my dad, the Jarl, and the uh, sorcerer guy. 
so you have to choose one of them. Seeing as the Yarl's got all his mates around him, I'm going to go speak to Mr. Uh, Wizard here. Oh, not sure what's going on here. My video seems to be going a bit funny. Um, so anyway, uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to quickly pickpocket the key off him. Obviously, you need to try and make sure you don't get caught, or else that can cause all sorts of issues. But now that I've got the key, this is pretty much done. It's just over here. <clears throat> um, jump over here, downstairs again, literally just back to Whispering Door. You've got the key, so you can now open the door. And when you open it up, you walk in, and on this table is the Ebony Blade. There it is. It's a big two-handed kind of katana. Um, I think it's a Daedric weapon it's classed as. And there's a little book there which describes the weapon. Um... What is the enchantment? Well, basically, when you damage other people, it takes their life, their health, and it gives it to you. So it damages them and heals you at the same time. That's awesome. Um, now, she does say something there about uh, it isn't quite up to its usual standards. And I think you actually have to kill your friends or companions to get to make it better. I'm not entirely sure how that part works. So if anyone does know, if anyone wants to clarify that for me, feel free to pop a comment down there. Um, now, just for the record, this here is a, a comparison between my original setup, which is my Skyforge Steel Sword, um, like level 50 odd in that, and me and Lydia, between the two of us, we do kill those two guys, but you'll see I've not got much health left. I only had like, I don't know, 30% to 50% of my health left. Now, this is the Ebony Blade. You'll see the screen start going red, um, and the White Run Guard, his health is dropping like no one's business, and my health is still almost full. So that's one guard down. Straight down here, find the second guard. He started hurting me a little bit, shooting some arrows at me. I've lost a bit, but here we go. Start wailing on him, and you'll see my health is slowly but surely just filling back up while his is slowly but surely going down. Doesn't matter if they block. If they block, it just means that you do less damage to them and you heal yourself less, but you're still taking their life at the end of the day. So you see he's dead, still on full health after two guards. On to guard number three here. Again, just wailing away. He's blocking most of his shots, but it's fine. I'm just, you know, slowly knocking his life down. Mine's just staying at like 100%. Um, now, this doesn't always work. You know, you'll come across some guys. This guy's barely attacking me for some reason. It's a bit weird. Um, but even when he does, I can still just attack him and get life back. And look, you see, I'm almost full again. Up here, number four. So remember, on the last one with my Skyforge Steel Sword, two guys had me well down on my health. Um, that's damage 20. The uh, Ebony Blade's only damage 17. Absorbs the essence of your foes, strengthened by the blood of deceit. So again, I think it it gets better if you kill your friends or something. And this is just evidence that my two-handed skill is now up to 26, whereas my one hand is at 54. So you can see there's a big difference there. Um, but the Ebony Blade was far more effective. Anyway, I'm done, guys. Thanks for that. Any questions, pop them in the comment section. Give it a like if you liked it. And uh, if you want to see more, subscribe. See you guys. I'm off. Bye-bye.